Normalization is the process of breaking a table down into multiple tables until each has only one thing. It is necessary to understand functional dependencies before going through the normalization process. This concept basically says that if the value of one field is known, then the values of another field will also be known. For instance, if I know an employee's ID number, I should also be able to definitely determine their name, hire date, office, address, and department. Functional dependencies do not necessarily work in reverse order. For instance, if I know a hire date, I do not necessarily know which employee I am referring to since more than one employee could be hired on the same date. So, the employee ID would determine the hire date. The employee ID is the determinant and the hire date is functionally dependent on the employee ID. The key to having a well-formed relation is that every determinant must be a candidate key. If a determinant is not a candidate key, a new table must be created that contains that determinant as the primary key and the dependents as the other fields in that table. In the following table, we have a list of employee number, professor rank, employee name, department code, department name, professor office, advisee ID, advisee name, advisee date of birth, and advisee age. We can see that this table is not normalized. It contains more than one theme. So our first step is to determine what the candidate keys are. Remember, a candidate key is a field that could be used as the primary key to uniquely identify each record. Here we could see that the employee number could not be a candidate key because it does not uniquely identify each record. On the other hand, we have the advisee ID field, which is unique to each record. Therefore, this would be a perfect candidate key. So, now our next step, now that we have identified the advisee ID as our candidate key, we need to determine the functional dependencies. In this step, we go through each field to see if we are given the value of that field and what other fields we would be able to determine or identify if we have the value of a particular field. For instance, if I'm giving the value of employee number 123, what other fields could be identified using that number 123? We can see clearly in this list that employee 123 in each instance has a professor rank. Also, employee 123 in every instance of this occurrence in the list has the employee name of Guy. The department code is CIS and the department name is Computer Information Systems and the professor office is KDD 567. So in this case we would say that the de employee number determines professor rank employee name, department code, and professor office. The next step is to determine any other functional dependencies. I left out department name on purpose because department name is functionally dependent on department code. For instance, if I'm given the department code of CHEM, then I know the department name will always be chemistry. 
if I'm given the department code of CIS, I know the department name will always be Computer Information Systems. Therefore, department code determines the department name. So here we have identified two functional dependencies in our list. Employee number is the determinant so that if I know the employee number I can also get the value of that employee's rank, name, department code, and their office. If I know the department code, then I can also determine the value of department name. The next step in normalization is to create new tables from these determinants that are not a candidate key. The first step we said that our advisee ID is our candidate key. Therefore, employee number and department code are not candidate keys. So we must make new tables in the normalization process using the, depend the determinant fields as our primary key in new tables. So we would create an employees table that would have our employee num as the primary key. And remember, the primary key should always be underlined, followed by the remaining dependent fields of professor rank, employee name, department code, and professor office. The next table we create will be a table that contains our departments with a primary key of department code and the dependent field department name. Now, because an employee works in a department, our department code in the employees table becomes our foreign key. It relates to the primary key in our departments table. Therefore, we can use the foreign key department code to assign an employee to a department. The last step is to maintain our original table with the remaining fields that are dependent on our candidate key. Our candidate key was advisee ID and the dependent fields consist of advisee information. So our table will be advisees with a primary key of advisee ID and the dependent fields advisee name, advisee date of birth, and advisee age. We also have to include our employee number because our advisees are assigned an advisor which has an employee number. Therefore, our normalized database would contain three tables, one for employees, one for departments, and one for advisees.